Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and welcome to Daily Faith. Today, I want to talk to you about the power you have to call the loved ones of your family out of darkness into light. You have more power than you'll ever realize. We're going to give you an update from Vatra, our mission work in Moldova that I think will make you just want to shout. You are important to us. You're important to God's work. And I'm just so glad that we can meet together today right here on Daily Faith. result of someone believing for my salvation. I've discovered something, that everyone has a contact person. Somebody has got to stand up somewhere and believe God for a miracle. When that man remembered the scripture when he was in, paralyzed on a bed, the Bible said four men came and lifted him up and brought him to where Jesus was. When they got to the house, the house was full, and they Instead of quitting and giving up and going home, the Bible says they sought means how to bring him, the sick man, to Jesus. And guess what they did? They climbed up on the roof and tore the tiles off the roof. And they lowered him down to where Jesus was. And Jesus says, man, your sins are forgiven. And the, all the religious folk went crazy. And Jesus said, well, just to show them who I am, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. There is a connective part in every miracle. There is someone somewhere believing for something. Uh, the, the boy with the loaves and fishes, we always talk about Jesus feeding the 5,000 men. But the mechanics of that miracle worked out when the wee boy took the loaves and fishes and ran to see Jesus. His plan wasn't to give Jesus the loaves and fishes. His plan was to have lunch. But God used that mechanical part for the miracle. And everything I've seen in my life, all the crazy stuff that God's involved me in for the kingdom of God, there has always been a human element. I believe with all my heart, my favorite story, you'll hear me talk about it a lot because it's so appropriate for today, is the prodigal father. That man who lost one of his boys, the other boy gave him no problems. The other boy stayed home and worked on the farm. But when the, when the prodigal son came home, the elder boy became the prodigal because the Bible said he was angry and would not go in. So the prodigal that had messed up and screwed up his life out drinking and, and, and wasting his substance on righteous living, the Bible says in the King James Version, he came back and was forgiven. And was given a ring and a robe and made right with his dad. And the guy that had been staying home all the time, the faithful one, was so angry that he would not go into the party. He would not recognize the fact that his, bo his brother, who was dead, was alive. To get that boy home from that pig pen, as he had gone and advanced through his money, the Bible says his father gave him half of his inheritance. That man was rich because he was able to take half of the money that he, that, that he had, of the, ink, the wealth that he had, and he was able to give the boy half, half of the money. He carried half of the money away and blew it all. And the father refused to quit. The element, the human element in the miracle of the prodigal son was the dad up at the end of the road. The Bible said when he was a far way off, the father saw him. The father, I'm 64 years of age, and I need these things. So when, I, when I turned 40, I could see everything I could see everything as clear as a bell until I turned 40. And one day I was reading a newspaper and all the, all the letters started moving around. 
and jumbling and, and, uh, and they hid behind each other. And I'm thinking, my goodness, there's something wrong with my eyes or the, the, there's something wrong with the paper. Nah, I went to the, I went to the eye doctor and he put on a, and, and suddenly everything became clear. But the Bible says in the prodigal story that when he was a far way off, he was away, away in the distance, the old dad's eyes were watching, tuned to that miracle. Unless you have a focus, in fact, I was talking to Mel just a few minutes ago, my daughter, she said, and it was so true, if that father had been distracted on the way up to the end of the road where he saw the boy, if somebody had come up in the farm and he allowed an issue to stop him going to where he always was to see the boy, if someone had got to the dad and let him see something so important that going to the end of the road this day wasn't all that a big a deal. He may have missed his own son coming home. So what I'm telling you is this. When you're believing God for your family to get saved, don't let distractions come and pull you away from the vision of household salvation. Don't allow what other people say to get into your head and turn your heart in a way that it's not the will of God. Let me tell you something today categorically. It is the will of God that every single member of your family is saved. The Bible says that God is willing that none should perish. So the will of God is that everyone finds salvation through Jesus. When you are a Christian, that is sharpened in a contract. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved, and your house. Now, that's not the, the place where you live. My name is Cameron. If you ask me, I'm of the house of Cameron. The queen is of the house of Windsor. What that means is it's, it's my family and cousins, and, and if your name is um, Taylor or Stuart, no, not Stuart Taylor, and Kennedy, rather, you are under the clan Cameron. Now, that's with a C, not with a K, so don't get worried. But my Cameron, my Scottish Cameron heritage is that my house of Cameron covers not just me, but, but everyone within my family covered by the clan name and all the other tributaries from it. So when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved and everybody connected to you. Everybody, your friends, are under your covenant. Your sons, your daughters, your grandkids, everybody that is connected to you in your heart is connected to God in this promise. And what we need today more than anything else is the understanding that God is bigger than the devil who you think is all-powerful. It amazes me how we always think the devil's got the power and God's kind of hoping around the edges to get our family saved. That is the opposite of the truth. God sits on his throne with a promise through the blood of Jesus that you and your family are going to be saved. That's the foundation stone. And the devil is like a little puppy dog outside barking, trying to convince you that it's not going to happen. Well, I'm here to tell you something. In the name of Jesus, your family is destined to get saved, and I want to believe God with you for that. There's a number on your screen, an address, P.O. Box 242246. I want you to write me today, or you can get a hold of the, 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 the what do you call it? Website. Website. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm an old fogey, and I, I'm still learning these newfangled ways. <laughs> PhilipDCameron.com. If you have an unsaved loved one, you are believing God for something to break hold and, and, and get into their lives. I want you to contact me today, and I want to see and believe God with you for a breakthrough. I've written a book that's important about household salvation, and I want to send it to you right now if you'll order it for us. Watch this, and we'll be back in a moment. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. 
Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years, and through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. When you order this book, Full House, and make a kind gift to our ministry to help us keep going and growing, I believe that when, we, when you receive this book in your hand, you're going to feel and see and, and understand the promise of household salvation. You are so close to the breakthrough that you are believing God for. The devil comes up. I, I, in my life anyway, when I'm at the point of breakthrough is when he, he, he fights the hardest and he, things, things break loose and, and you, start, you think, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? When my dad got saved, the closer he got to salvation, the meaner he got and the more abusive he became. And then one day the dam broke and salvation drowned him and he was never the same again. He, 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 his testimony was that he was born again at 20,000 miles an hour and he felt like a bulldozer was pushing him all the way to glory. And he was an alcoholic that abused my mom physically for years. But the breakthrough came and I'm, I just feel this so strongly that the breakthrough is coming your way not many days hence. And by getting this book, you are saying, I am making a statement of faith for my house to be full in the name of Jesus. So get that book afterwards. My daughter Melody is with us. We are discussing just now a tremendous situation that's happening in our mission work in Moldova. Moldova is a country that is the poorest in the whole of Europe, the highest population of alcoholism in the world, and orphanages that are in a horrendous condition. And the terror of it all at the end result is when a girl turns 16 or a boy, they're put on the street and traffickers get them. They are sold into slavery, sexual slavery for the girls, sex slaves, literally all over the world. They're in America, they're everywhere. They've, 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 in fact, my wife and I were coming back from, uh, from Moldova one time and the immigration officer came up and says, you know, where have you been? I says, Moldova. He says, you won't believe this. We've just been transferred up from the Caribbean and we intercepted a container ship. Uh, you know those containers, those 40-foot containers with 38 Moldovan girls in it, shipped from Odessa in the Ukraine all the way to the Caribbean on their way to America. That's how real this thing is. And what our ministry does is we build homes in Moldova where these kids come to, instead of being put on the street, they come to us and they hear the gospel and miraculous things take place. And I just encourage you to watch this video and see what God is doing. And I'll be back to share some more. Moldova is a nation in a desperate place, torn between the East and the West, stuck between yesterday and tomorrow. It has the highest alcoholism rate in the world and has been voted the unhappiest place on earth. Poverty and alcohol is a deadly mix. It breaks the home. It causes unimaginable suffering. It creates orphans. Children are abandoned as their parents go abroad to find work. Often, they never come back and children become another statistic in a land of loss. From the orphanage or poverty-stricken village, it is a short step to the arms of the trafficker and a life of unspeakable hell. Standing on street corners anywhere in the world, being sold as much as 30 to 50 times a day. Once a girl is broken, 
she won't fight back. Lost into a world of shame, pain, drugs and violence. Each girl can earn their captor $300,000 a year. Trafficking is more profitable than drugs. Yet, in the midst of all this sorrow, a miracle is taking place. Orphans are finding hope through the work of the orphans' hands. They are finding their broken hearts healed by God's love, and hope is turning into action. These amazing kids, once redeemed, have an unstoppable desire to help those who have been left behind. They have become missionaries to those who are what they once were. We are growing. We desperately need more space. We have been praying and God has given an answer. Vatra Village. Six homes that will hold 90 kids. Vatra means hearth, a place of warmth and comfort, something most of these kids have never known. These beautiful homes are not yet complete, but by God's grace, they will be the hearth in the heart of many kids who today are alone. In these rooms, care and love, hope and healing will transform pain into purpose and loss into life. Standing a few hundred feet from Moldova's largest lake, Vatra was sold for over one million dollars just a few years ago. Today, it has been offered to the orphan's hands for the miraculous price of $600,000. The owners know what we do. They want us to help the youth of their nation. Just think, for what two captured girls earn in the hell of trafficking, we can buy Vatra Village, a place of hope to save countless lives. Will you help us to save these broken lives from cold street corners and offer them a hearth, a home? Thank you. Vatra Village is an ark of safety. Every girl you see in that video has been saved from a life of unspeakable horror. Telling someone that is cold, the Bible says, be warm, and someone that is hungry, be fed, is not enough. The gospel works when it's put into action. And what we're doing in Vatra Village is we are building a lifeboat for 90 lives that right now as I'm talking to you have nowhere to go, have no hope, have no place in the world. They are orphans. All of their documentation has stamped orphan. So when they try and get a job, they walk in and it's an orphan and, and the reputation of the orphan is that you'll steal from us and there's no place here for you. And God has given us an opportunity by buying Vatra Village. We are so close to having it paid for. We lack $140,000 and Vatra Village will be completely paid off. All the buildings will be paid for and we'll be allowed to take in these kids and watch God transform their lives. My daughter Melody is with us. How important is it for a young girl leaving an orphanage to have more than just a piece of paper telling that you know, there's, there's, there are traffickers in the world? Well, you understand these girls have grown up in, a, in the four walls of an orphanage. And um, limited education, very little street smarts. Um, and to walk beyond a gate where they have never been before in their life. Um, imagine the daunting fear that comes over there. All I would be concerned about is I've got to find somewhere I can go, something that I can do to take care of myself. And if that, the desperation would cause me to do anything. I would, I would grasp at any straw, any opportunity. And these girls are walking out the door just waiting for their chance. And 
these men, they know, they know, um, they know the game, and um, they're there waiting for them at the bus stop. They're given a, a, a ticket to the place of their birth, where that family who put them in the orphanage is not waiting for them, but the traffickers are. And us going into the orphanage and saying, you have, we love you, we have somewhere for you to come, we have a safe place for you, we'll, we'll provide you with an education, is, it's life-saving. I mean, and, and that's not just like, it's life-saving. It is life-saving. Literally. Literally life-saving. Yeah. And I've been watching, I, I'm, been watching Netflix this week, um, the story about Madeline McCann. You remember the little girl? Oh, I watched it. At the very end of this um, series, they mentioned that the family, British agencies, Portuguese, this little girl was abducted from their vacation home and when they were visiting Portugal. They have spent $11 million trying to find this little girl. They believe that oh, she's been trafficked. $11 million. These orphans don't have anybody spending a dime looking for them. So if, if you've got nations with all of their resources trying to find One. this little girl, and it's been 14 years, I believe, that they've been looking for her. Imagine the hope that an orphan from Moldova has. I remember, There's no hope. I remember watching that, the, the, the movie Taken. Yeah. And we sat down and watched it in one of our homes with all the girls to kind of warn them. And I, after, the, after it was finished, I said, well, what do you think? And one of the girls said, she had a daddy to come yeah. and find her. We wouldn't. Yeah. That's how serious this is. And we have an opportunity at Vatra Village to literally change 90 kids' lives for the gospel. We are $140,000 away from having the place paid for, the buildings paid for. And I'm asking God to speak to your heart to make a miracle happen for these kids. When all of this started, Melody was the age of the girls that were coming out of the orphanage. And I looked at her, and I couldn't imagine her standing on a street corner, being put in the back of a car, and 30 to 50 men a day using my girl. It haunted me night and day. And I said, please, God, let me help the best I know how. I never thought it would get to this extent. I never thought that we'd have to believe God for houses that will take 90 kids. And this is just the beginning. But we as a family are willing to risk everything we have to save one more, to reach one more, to, to give another person a chance. And I want you to pray with us. I say this all the time. If I could take you to Vatra Village and walk you around these halls and let you meet some of the young girls whose lives will be saved by what we are doing and look into their faces and say, listen, it's okay. I'm going to give to help you so you won't have to be sold on a street corner. $140,000 with the audiences watching me just now could be taken care of today. If I were to say to you I could buy all of these houses and put 90 kids in here for $1,000, most of you would say, well, I can, have, I, I can put a, a, a card or, or I can sell something. I, I, I can do something towards this, Philip. Well, I'm asking God to speak to 140 people that will do something right now. You say, well, I, I just don't, I couldn't afford $1,000. Well, whatever you can give, it is a symptom of your faith and your love. It is an evidence of your care for those in need. One day it may be your daughter, not on a street corner, but that needs salvation. And the seed you sow may be the very thing that builds a fortress of protection around your family. I have had to turn away girls. 
I've had to look into the, the faces of young ladies and tell them, I'm very sorry, but there's no space for you. I don't have a bed. And look at the utter horror and disappointment on their face as they got off a park bench and walked in the darkness. You have incredible power in your hands right now. That number, 833 Daily Faith, is your direct contact with us. You can call that number and you can put that gift on a card right now. And it's like wire transferring us money. You can go to philipdcameron.com and there's a, 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 a giving button right there you can give securely. Or you can write P.O. Box 242246 in Montgomery, Alabama. It'll come back up in a few moments so you'll get a chance to write it down. Do something today. You're looking for God for a miracle in your home. I'm looking for God for a miracle in the lives of these kids. We love you so much. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. Daily Faith with Philip Cameron, The Orphan's Hands, reserves the right to direct allocated funds to the greatest need.